for some of you, for most of you, maybe this will be uh, uh, redundant. But for, for some of you, it might be useful to have a quick recap of machine learning. So machine learning is all about learning uh, a hypothesis map. Um, this can be a very complex hypothesis map. For example, uh, song recommendation. And the, the, the goal of this recommendation is to find the best song to uh, lift the mood up. So for example, in Finland in, in November, it's very dark here and people are very tired. It's very tough, but sometimes a good song can really uh, lift up the mood. And here this is a machine learning problem. So you want to learn for a data point, which is a, a specific user like me in this case, and you have certain features. So the mood, tired, you have the daytime, it's currently evening. So what, what should you play to lift the mood of this user? And the prediction is like the song Bohemian Rhapsody. And uh, just, just to point out that there's uh, a reasonable or, or serious work about this here. Here's a, a reference to uh, some work on the effect of music ther therapy. So this could be actually quite useful application of machine learning. And how, how do we learn this hypothesis? Well, we learn a hypothesis by evaluating its usefulness. And its usefulness is in, machine, in most machine learning methods uh, evaluated by uh, measuring the prediction error. So we have here, here for example, we have a, a data point, a blue data point, and we want to we measure the prediction error as the difference between the, the true label of the data point and the predicted label. This is the, the function value, h of x. So we then average these losses and we can use different types of loss functions. This is a design choice. For example, we can use the, the squared error loss here. Squared error loss is a popular choice for measuring predictions errors. And then what machine learning does, what model training is, is solving this optimization problem. So here you also see how machine learning is formulated as an optimization problem. And in this course, you will see how to formulate federated learning as an optimization problem. So we will extend this, uh, this formulation, which is called empirical risk minimization, to cover or to introduce this coupling with other nodes. Because if, if we would not collaborate in a federated learning system among the devices, then we could just look at each device independently and start it uh, using machine learning techniques. But what makes federated learning is the, the collaboration between different such learning problems. And uh, the way we do it, we will see later, is actually a, a form of regularization. But before I talk about regularization, I just want to uh, complete the discussion of the basic machine learning workflow. So after we have solved this training problem, for example, using a dot .fit function in Python, we get a training error. And one, one of the most important uh, rules in applied machine learning is never ever stop after model training. You must always validate the trained model. And we validate the trained model by uh, computing the prediction errors or the average loss on a validation set that has not been used, has not been used in this training problem. So these red, red dots here, these red data points, they are not used in this training problem. But we use these red dots to compute the validation error. And then you can analyze to a large degree or quite a lot, you can diagnose machine learning methods just by comparing this training error with the validation error. You can then see if the model overfits, if you should use more training data, or if it underfits, you should more use more complicated models. And this is then, the, I would say, the day-to-day -day loop of an applied machine learning scientist. So you, you try out different models uh, or increase, or you use different training data sets and see what what you get for the training error and validation error. And as soon as the training error and the validation error are on the same level as a, a benchmark or your target performance, then you are done. So this is then an iterative loop typically that each iteration includes a change of the model hyperparameters or a change of the training data, gather more data or replace some data points because they might be poisoned. And instead of this of this, let's say, trial, discrete trial and error approach, you could use a more smooth approach, which is regularization. So applied machine learning is, uh, many applied machine learning techniques are based on the idea of artificially extending the training set by data augmentation. So you, you say 
instead of observing a data point with feature value three, I could also have observed a data point with feature value 3.2, because these feature values might come from a noisy sensor, which by itself has some only some, some tolerance level up to 2% error tolerance or something. So you could say naturally, it would make sense to add to each original data point a slightly perturbed version. And this is the idea of, of data augmentation. So in data augmentation, we, we augment each original data point by several perturbations. And different data augmentation methods are obtained by different choices for this perturbation. So this perturbation could be just add some random noise, or if a data point is an image, it could mean to, to rotate an image. Because uh, often when you rotate an image, its label, for example, if it shows a cat, doesn't change. Okay, uh, so this was just a, a very quick overview of uh, the machine learning basics. And in the next model, we will see how we can extend this basic machine learning setting to federated learning by using networks. Or in particular, we will introduce the concept of a federated learning network, which will be our main mathematical model for federated learning applications. And in the later models, we will see how we can use these federated learning networks to design and to analyze federated learning systems. Thanks for your attention.